waveform capnography <laughs> is being used by uh, ACLS and the American Heart now to monitor the effectiveness of CPR and the effectiveness of our ventilations on the patient. Uh, the reason that we're liking this a lot more than we're liking pulse oximetry at this time is pulse oximetry is a lot more, a lot easier to fool uh, by different problems with the patient's system. Stuff like uh, the patient has peripheral vascular disease, their extremities are cold, they're wearing nail polish, um, they have carbon monoxide poisoning, there's lots of things that can fool it. Uh, waveform capnography measures the amount of uh, entitled CO2 that's in the patient's system, so we're not actually measuring oxygen, we're measuring the amount of carbon dioxide, but it should follow a specific range. So if we're in that range, then we know that we're getting good ventilations in and out because we're getting good uh, entitled CO2 numbers. So in a normal person, your entitled CO2 should be between 35 and 40. For a person that's having that's in cardiac arrest that's having CPR, you want to find you want any number greater than 10. So that's kind of a big difference between 35 and 40, and anything greater than 10. But remember, you're doing chest compressions. We're doing artificial uh, circulation and artificial ventilation on the patient, and it's never quite as effective as what the real thing is. So uh, anything greater than 10. If I have a number that's less than 10 uh, for capnography. What might I want to look for as a problem? Because that means that I'm not getting effective uh, entitled CO2 coming back. So what would be one of the first things I'd want to check? You Remember your mega code video, huh? Your bagging them correctly. That would not, be the second thing, actually. That's not going to. If you're in the right, right place. What? If you're properly in the right place. What's the word? If you're in the right. If the air, if the if my airway air adjunct is, right. is in the correct place. Right. That's possible. How about chest compressions? Remember, they, they were really uh, harping on chest compressions uh, for the ACLS Megacode video. And remember, during the, specifically during the video, uh, the person who was doing compressions had kind of uh, slowed down, and they were told to speed back up. And the reason being is that there may have been a change in the end tidal CO2 numbers they were looking at. If you paid attention to the video, uh, one of the medics on the video actually hooked up the end tidal CO2, which was this little device here to the ET tube when he started bagging. So the, well, this is pretty simple. It just hooks up to a regular, any type of uh, O2 adapter. It hooks up like that, and then you can hook it directly into your BVM. So when you're bagging the patient, even just regular, this will run through and runs up to the unit and plugs in. So as soon as you plug it in, it'll actually register, the monitors now register these, and uh, we'll actually throw up an extra value, value system uh, showing the title CO2. So I have three here, and the bottom one would be my uh, blood pressure. Uh, the third one down will be the entitled CO2 number, and you can see it on the display. As the, if I'm checking it for placement, I heard somebody say placement of my device if I had an ET tube or in place. Um, it could mean that the ET tube's been dislodged, which is correct. But one of the key things for remembering to figuring out if the, the ET tube has been dislodged or it's in the incorrect place is the waveform. So not only do we have a number, but we even have a waveform to watch. And we pull it up, at the, it'll be on the monitor that you're checking. And this one I actually pull it up and change it to the capnography waveform. So as I breathe, it'll show a little wave showing up there. If the ET tube is in the incorrect place and I'm bagging, and I don't have this waveform show up at the bottom of the screen, that means my tube is in the incorrect place and I need to either pull that tube or reposition what I'm doing. Everybody see the waveform? So if my ET tube is displaced or it wasn't put in place in the first, uh, incorrectly in the initial, I won't have a waveform. And so if I have no waveform, I, the, my ET tube's placement is incorrect. Or my tube that I'm using as my airway or uh, airway adjunct is not correct. Also, you can see my number here over the side, which is rolling down now, uh, was 36 at the time, uh, which is in the normal range. If the number is lower than 35, that means I'm breathing 
Too fast or too slow? <coughs> means I have less CO2 in my system. You burn, breathe too fast. So I'm breathing too fast. Or if I'm bagging the patient, I'm bagging them too fast. Slow down. If my number is greater than 40, that means I'm bagging too slowly or not deeply enough, and I need to adjust. So just it's really easy when you're doing it to just watch the number. Uh, the other thing to remember too, when you're looking at pulse oximetry on the monitors that you have, the pulse ox number that you're seeing is about a minute old. That's not what's happening right now. That's what happened a minute ago. It takes about a minute for the computers in these units to process it and give you the number. The capnography that you see is no more than 15 seconds old. So it's much faster. So normal level in a patient is what? 35 to 40. If I'm doing CPR, I'm looking for an uh, a end tidal CO2 number greater than 10. If it's less than 10, the first thing I'm going to look at is chest, chest compressions. The next thing I'm going to look at is the person doing the ventilating. I'm going to look at the person doing my bag, and I'm going to check to see, two, if I have a waveform, uh, if it's hooked up to a, an advanced airway, and if I have no waveform, that means that the tube has become dislodged. <laughs> on, for American Heart Association, in the your textbook and on your test, you'll see uh, capnography written as PETCO, P-E-T-C-O-2, PETCO. Uh, you can, uh, PETCO is the same thing as end tidal, CO2 is the same thing as capnography. It all, it's all the, the same thing. It's measurement of how much carbon dioxide is in the system. What does the P stand for? Uh, <coughs> pulmonary. Huh? Pulmonary. What's pulmonary X? Pulmonary? I have to look again. Huh? Percentage of end-tidal CO2. Percentage of end. So you will see some questions on the test with end-tidal CO2, but they'll be written as PETCO, P-E-T-C-O-2. Okay. They're going to ask about the 10, that should be a 10. You might see that on the test. <laughs> you might see 35 to 40. Yeah. You might see chest compressions. Or are we also going to see what we need to do to fix it? Well, that's what I was explaining. If you look at your number. If your number is low, then you're bagging too fast. If your number is high, you're not bagging fast enough. 